No hat. So, hello everybody. My name is Bodi Jarbenchat. Uh, officially, I'm uh, professor, assistant professor at the Budapest University of Technology and, and Economics Department of uh, <coughs> Network Systems and Services. So we changed the name, and uh, it is not fixed on the slide yet. Uh, in fact, uh, there there is a laboratory called Laboratory of Cryptography and System Security Crisis Lab, uh, a very small lab. So I mean that uh, only some five or six permanent members, not not something huge. And uh, so I work there, and also we work. Uh, uh, we have some startup companies like Ukatami Technologies, and we try to monetize our results uh, in these companies as well. What I will talk about is uh, targeted attacks and malware threat intelligence. What do I think about that? Um, maybe some additional information uh, that you don't know. Maybe something that you already knew and uh, not so interesting. And uh, I will uh, show these pieces of information on, on different tracks. So I, it is not something like we, we come from point A and we will end at uh, point B. But I will just tell you small items, interesting information. What do we do? Uh, what type of systems are available during or work and so on. So targeted attacks is uh, uh, an interesting problem. Uh, the name APT is not so interesting. So advanced persistent threat it shows that, OK, the adversary is so, so good, so, so some attacker is so good, he can remain in our system for months. I don't like this uh, term because it's, uh, it is not, not the reality. We are just too dumb or too silly to, to uh, find out uh, that somebody attacked us and so on, which is, of course, <laughs> Which is generally, of course, it can happen even with me. So nobody is sure that what type of software is running, especially if it, he runs uh, Windows or something. So of course, n nobody knows what is happening in their systems. But you have to be more careful, for sure. So uh, during my presentation, I will uh, cover some of these attacks. I mean, uh, tell you some details, some information that is possibly already available, possibly not. But I hope it will be interesting for you. What type of or what, what pieces of malware should, uh, will I talk about or what uh, attack campaigns? Uh, the first campaign we covered was Duku. Uh, then we worked on Flame, Gauss, Mini Duke, Team Spy, Cosmic Duke, or uh, Mini Duke 2 original version. It is my uh, term for that. Uh, Tourla, Urobor was Snake, uh, uh, related campaigns, World Cup Sack, Vipot, uh, Epic, Taj Mahal, very hard to follow the, the whole story, and some others. Uh, <coughs> and uh, as well, uh, yes, also Cosmic Duke and Mini Duke 2 original is two different things. I will explain it later. So some slides from the ancient times, what happened, what we uh, did uh, in this field. Uh, in September 2011, we found uh, a malware uh, in a system. So the, the company asked us to help because they already rec recognized that they are compromised. And uh, with our help, we could find out details about the attack and uh, pieces of malware components that, uh, that uh, helped uh, the attackers to, to reach their goals. Uh, and when we analyzed the whole story, we found that uh, this attack uh, is very similar to the Stuxnet. So the code is similar to the, the uh, code uh, that was used in the Stuxnet attacks. I guess you know about the Stuxnet uh, attacks, that it was <coughs> done by somebody against Iranian nuclear uh, program. So that was really strange that somebody uh, so important is, is making an attack uh, very much uh, with a related uh, code. Uh, so uh, this was really something interesting. And of, of course, our work was uh, uh, published uh, in newspapers and uh, press and so on. So there was a big visibility on, uh, by, by uh, this activity on us. And that made us uh, more capable to work more on the topic. That means that with all our connections, with all our possibilities, uh, we had the chance to work on other, uh, other pieces of uh, similar malware. Like uh, next year in May, we found the, or we made the first technical analysis on the flame malware. There we don't uh, really, dis, uh, uh, really tell how we worked, but uh, uh, we uh, always told that if we, uh, we worked as a part of an international collaboration on the malware. But we don't tell with who and what, uh, what type of collaboration was it, who made what, and so on. But we always uh, said that, OK, part of this analysis contains data that is not uh, uh, originating from us, but we just took it and, and published it. 
uh, because of a reason, the flame was against used mainly on Iranian attack, uh, Iranian victims, and uh, but also for Palestine uh, t uh, territories and and uh, uh, Sudan. Uh, why Sudan? Why Palestine territories? Uh, if you uh, hear the news all the time, like uh, what happened in Gaza and what happened uh, uh, just uh, in the same year in Gaza, is uh, very interesting because uh, uh, you know Israel is attacked uh, actual target targets by physical means, but how you. Get get the information what to be attacked. Very interesting to know uh, how Sudan or, uh, creates rockets that are sold to Palestinians and uh, how the, the wall uh, thing uh, comes together. So the, again, cyber and non-cyber, normal physical world gets closer and closer, and therefore politics is, and, and, and war is not just a topic that is outside of the internet. It is uh, really part of it. And this is uh, uh, one of the stories that, that uh, uh, emphasizes that. Uh, then uh, we worked on uh, 2013, uh, we worked on the Mini Duke Maver together with Kaspersky Labs. The, the ground of this collaboration was that uh, one of the first victims who identified that some <coughs> interesting targeted attacks is taking place, some, uh, some strange PDF file came to him. Uh, is, was a Hungarian guy. We don't know him, but we know that some Hungarian guy was attacked for some reason, and uh, hence we started up a collaboration with the Kaspersky Lab to de deal with the problem. And later on this year, uh, mini Duke attackers attacked again, so we have some novel information, I will uh, give some uh, insight and, and details on it. Uh, and in March, uh, the same year, we uh, worked together with uh, NSA Hungary, National Security Authority of Hungary, uh, because uh, the, far, uh, by some means they, they found that the uh, Hungarian government was actually attacked by a targeted attack. And uh, they already knew about uh, pieces and such, uh, so it is not uh, the reason behind uh, they contacted us was not they cannot solve the issue, but we can be more efficient if we work together, and we are more efficient if we, uh, if, uh, we use up all our connections towards all the companies, antivirus companies, certs, and uh, so on, and we have an experience how to handle this type of problems. Um, the list is, uh, can be extended with uh, the events this year. We worked on uh, Mini Duke. Uh, uh, two samples, and we worked on Uroburos uh, Turla snake campaigns, as I mentioned, uh, I will get back to that. Uh, what happens if we uh, uh, make an investigation like that? So for, for what, what, is, uh, what, did, uh, what we did for, for so what, what should be done uh, in that case? It is not, not, it, not just technical. Technical means like analyzing a code or something is just 20% of the whole stuff. The more important uh, thing is to how to share information, how to collaborate with others. I cannot share because the document contains a company name. Then uh, I cannot share because I think that the attack is from Russia, therefore I cannot uh, notify anybody th who is related to Russia, any company. The, if the attack is coming from the US, I cannot uh, t tell any details to any US uh, company. But in the case of Flame, for example, there was a zero day uh, used uh, uh, against the victims, uh, and the zero day was related to Microsoft. How to notify Microsoft, maybe your own guys, your own country is m making uh, uh, problems with your products and so on. Maybe not. So <laughs> attribution is against a very problematic approach. So whenever I, I, I tell you uh, uh, country names, it is just uh, a, a, a hypothesis or whatever. So don't, uh, don't take it too much serious. Uh, so. Uh, then w what is this 80% of other works and uh, what should you do? Is, uh, you want to understand what is the situation. This is intelligence, uh, the part of the, 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 this story. So you need intelligence to understand what is going on, what is the situation. And to understand that, you have to dig for more information. You, to ha you have to understand how the malware works, how to relate it, network activity is done, who might be behind the attack, what are the goals of the attackers, and so on and so on. And if you are uh, clever enough, then you might uh, uh, want to solve additional issues. How can I help all the internet users to find out what is happening or if they are attacked? How can I help other governments to find out more about the stuff? Uh, what can I share? How, uh, what tools can I build uh, uh, to help them? Uh, of course, it comes to the, the question, uh, was there any zero day or any kind of uh, vulnerability used uh, in, in the attack? If uh, there was any sign that uh, it might be, then you, you might want to figure out what happened, even if uh, the information is partial. But 
but you might <coughs> see some pieces of, 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 of the puzzle, like temporary files that uh, was created by the exploit. And from those files, you might understand that, okay, uh, maybe it is related to Acrobat Reader and somehow it uh, goes around the sandbox or something like that. Maybe you cannot, you, you won't find the actual PDF file that, that, that is responsible for this attack, then, but based on this information, you can help, for example, Adobe to fix, uh, fix their software and, and, uh, and uh, uh, get the, the word more protected against. So some, some pieces what we did in, in the Dooku case, we found uh, Dooku, we made the first analysis, not for, uh, uh, so uh, why we did this first analysis? Why, uh, the other option would uh, have been that I, I, we just give uh, the, the piece of the code what we found to an AV company and they will do the analysis. First of all, they won't, uh, won't do that because they, they, we are just a small uh, lab in Hungary at, at the end of the world and why should they take uh, it serious to, 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 to work on this piece of code? Uh, so we have to explain why it is important, uh, why it is connected to Stuxnet and why you should do something. On the other hand, if you just share with one AV company, then problems with the competition, problems with what do they do, if you should do, uh, uh, send it to all the AV companies, then the information might leak out before solving the issue, before understanding everything. So it is a careful story, when to share, what to share. And the initial idea was that uh, let, uh, let us do what we can and, uh, until a point. Uh, in, in fact, what we did is we, we just said that, okay, we have a deadline. We don't have a goal what to do in this analysis, but we have a deadline. We do everything what we can do until the next Wednesday. And then the next Wednesday, we will share the information, even the questions. We don't know. We don't, uh, we, uh, for example, we don't know how to debug this special programming language, uh, whatever. Then we don't care. Others will follow our work. So this is an initial analysis that can be later on refined. What happens is generally generally nobody refines it anymore because the incentive for, for <coughs> all these companies is generally for first, first of course to protect their customers. But uh, it is very easy in, in, in the traditional AV technology, so you make a signature and then look for, for, for pieces of code at the customers. But the second is then they want to get attention, media attention, marketing advantage uh, by the analysis. But if everything is solved or uh, there is no visible ways to go forward and get big visibility because part of the story is already published, then they stop uh, working on it because there is no big motivation to continue the work. This is, this is a problem for, uh, for sure, and, and uh, that can be uh, later on. Uh, so some, somehow uh, this should be changed by the, the community, by the society, uh, uh, to, to, to have an incentive uh, to work on the, these uh, problems. So after we made the first uh, uh, analysis, we, uh, we were happy to uh, that collaborating with the uh, victim, we were able to um, find out what was the initial infection vector, which was actually an email containing an attachment file containing a zero-day exploit, and that was used against uh, uh, Windows computers to infect uh, them with Dooku. It was very important to find this file because uh, uh, otherwise, so we expected that uh, somebody uh, will find these, these uh, uh, these uh, exploit uh, or, or uh, phishing files, but uh, uh, after two weeks, uh, uh, nobody reported from, from other victims. I mean, after publishing on Dooku, uh, something like 20 victims were uh, found, uh, found in the world. Uh, that, that's a very small number, but it is an extremely targeted attack, so only very specific, uh, important targets were attacked, and uh, uh, it was the, maybe, maybe there was another case when, when the, the, uh, the uh, PD, uh, uh, the file was found what uh, was used for, for the attack, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, uh, after doing that, we were thinking about, okay, we know about Dooku, how it works, and, uh, and, and strange things, like uh, uh, we, we can use our knowledge on any computer to find out traces for Dooku because it has specific uh, identifiers, like uh, abusing, P, uh, P, uh, so using PNF files that are not original Windows files, and so on, and uh, we translated our knowledge into code. We made an, an open source Dooku detector toolkit, which is more heuristic than, than an uh, average antivirus, but not totally heuristic, so not just reporting every type of alarm. Uh, the, the, by, but the idea was that maybe uh, Dooku exists in different forms, and by our tool, maybe somebody is able to find out different versions or, or, uh, or, uh, or branches or whatever. Um, and of course, uh, what I mentioned is uh, a part of the story. We were mediators of information sharing, a lot of emails coming here and there, encryption, no encryption, nobody uses encryption, and so on. Uh, so, uh, uh, very problematic approach. 
Uh, after Duku, we worked on, on Flame. As I mentioned, we uh, participated in an international collaboration. But what is uh, uh, public is that uh, one day uh, the National Cert of Iran, which is called Maher Center, disclosed uh, they are inf investigating a malware called Flamer. Uh, and the next day, Crisis released the initial technical report on Flame, <coughs> which we called Skyviper at that time. And Kaspersky at the same time re uh, released details about their work on, on their, uh, the malware Flame. There were about 10,000 uh, victims. Later on, we worked on Miniduke. For Miniduke, I will uh, show you some novel things f from this year, so therefore it is a bit more important to understand how it comes to Miniduke. Uh, it comes through Itaduke. So the, the first thing was that FireEye detected that a new zero-day technique is used against uh, our Acrobat Reader. Uh, the date is on the slide. And uh, it, the PDF abused the zero-day vulnerability in uh, Acrobat and installed a uh, malware. Uh, this was called Itaduke because Ita is relax to Italian because the exploit used the Italian words. Hence the idea that maybe the Italian hacking team who sells uh, some stuff like, uh, uh, you know, all, all day uh, they are talking about Finn Fisher to, uh, this time, but there are others on the, the, the market who produce similar uh, uh, utilities for, for, for who knows who. Uh, so uh, this stands for or ITA, and Duke is that some, some people uh, thought that it is relate, might relate to Duku, but not sure, but very similar activities, so therefore they, they uh, uh, gave the name ITA Duke. But after one week, so one week later, uh, somebody uploaded, as I mentioned, a Hungarian guy, uh, to virus total a file to check if it is, uh, if it is uh, uh, malicious or not. So virus total is a service when you upload files and it checks with all the uh, antivirus tools and, and it gives you the result how many antivirus would detect it as a, it as a malicious file. And if you can upload PDF files as well. And somebody uploaded a PDF file containing the same zero-day uh, exploit but containing a totally different malware or piece of malware. Uh, which was strange, uh, but uh, one idea. Maybe after the, uh, the FireEye report, uh, the exploit uh, could be downloaded by samples, shared among uh, guys, and somebody just reused this exploit. The other explanation is that somebody else also knew about the exploit, so, or bought it, and, uh, and made another malware. Uh, and the technique, how they, they worked, is that they tried to infect many hosts, but then they did not start to extract information yet. So most likely the idea was they had the exploit and they understood that because of the publicity on the exploit, the, their tools won't be useful anymore. So in the last minute, they released uh, uh, these malicious files to infect as many hosts as they can to have an initial backdoor. And later on, they can go back and one by one check what they have. Uh, and of course, this one by one means that uh, we found something like 60 victims uh, and uh, half of them could be uh, identified by who is information and so on. And for many of these were, were uh, civil rights organizations, NGOs and so on, and uh, uh, governmental organizations like Ministry of Defense, Ministry of this, Ministry of that, mostly ar around Europe, but uh, some of them in the US. And who knows how many others were infected. And uh, the one other thing was interesting in this case that uh, we only uh, analyzed the voice story for one week. So, so from the first indication of, of a new PDF file until the point we published it was just one week. And when we published it, it was it already uh, two days later when we notified secretly some of the victims, some of the organizations that can help handle this, this type of problem. And uh, for example, NATO. NATO was also attacked by this uh, uh, malware and so on. So, so it's a really short time, but it was important because uh, this way we possibly uh, uh, avoided to, to have a bigger problem. I mean, because of the timely fashion of, of the answer, they were not able to collect so much information. Uh, who knows who are the attacker actually, but uh, uh, so uh, of course we have some ideas, especially if you look of the, on, on the problems in Ukraine and, and, uh, and nearby. Uh, then just uh, one month later, we worked on TeamSpy, as I mentioned. Uh, the interesting thing is that the, the campaign goes back to eight years or something. And many of the components that we found were already identified as malicious, but just nobody could combine them that, okay, these 10 tools uh, relate to each other and are done uh, or used by the same group. And the other question was, and this is the intelligence, if these attackers are uh, really targeted attackers of something, a nation-backed group uh, who tries to uh, infiltrate computers and, and get information, or they are just cyber criminals. 
Uh, maybe they just attacked 1,000 sites and they found one important victim and then, then they just copied the documents. Oh, why, why not? It is so interesting to get some information from the ministry uh, and so on. Uh, and then our investigation uh, went to uh, get more information about victims and, and their activities. That, uh, and this information is generally not available from the malware itself. It is available from the network activity and the background servers. So here the investigation focused on going uh, to, 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 the, to their, their servers they use for the attack and try to extract information about other victims. And uh, yes, and the, the other story is that you don't know how many servers uh, are related to this attack. So first you just know about those that were used in your case. But based on the knowledge that you can uh, gather by, by your investigations, you can find out ways to get information about other servers. And if you build up uh, enough information about the servers, so, so you, you are not investigating just one, but 10 or 100, then you might collect uh, additional information that, that helps you to understand it more deeply. So here what happened is we, we um, could uh, reach out to many servers and obtain thousands of IP addresses uh, from, uh, that are related to this campaign, but uh, throughout years. So sometimes, uh, I don't know when, uh, they, they, they had a database that contains on, uh, contained only Iranian victims. So they most likely had a campaign in one year for two months that, okay, guys, you have to attack Iran and get this information. And then they worked on that and left on, on, on their servers as a garbage, so they are not that tidy guys uh, uh, working there. Okay. Uh, already mentioned, uh, re technical relationship between Duku and Stuxnet, not so impo uh, interesting, and I have a lot of other slides, so let's go and uh, talk about that. We can get back later. Just a reminder that uh, uh, there was a strange photo about the galaxy inside the keylogger of Duku. And it, uh, of course, we, because of the light, it does not look, uh, uh, so the quality is not so good, but uh, it is really uh, two, two galaxies uh, uh, crashing each other or, or combining their forces in one understanding of the stuff. Uh, the other is that it looks like uh, an eagle's head like uh, in the logo of some <laughs> of the uh, three-letter companies. Uh, and, uh, and but but the reality is that nobody knows why a partial partial image of uh, partial so just eight kilobytes first eight kilobytes of this image was uh, embedded into the Duku and some additional information about uh, why why uh, we think that Duku was related to Stuxnet. The code similarities, but, but you don't have to think about just uh, that, uh, okay, after a move there is an incrementation, so the, not like that. Uh, it's uh, what type of uh, tools do we use or exact uh, 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 similarities between uh, routines, especially in encryption parts, because encryption is generally very uh, personalized uh, or obfuscation, so not always cryptography grade encryption, but, but uh, like packer routine for the malware and so on. But uh, here, there is another uh, interesting thing uh, you can see is that uh, how Duku configuration worked, and this is very strange. I mean that if you design something like that, then um, you, you will make your own, and the similarity between Stuxnet and Duku is very evident if you look on this, because nobody gets the same idea just, just uh, by fortune. So when the main uh, kernel driver was loaded to the Windows system, uh, then it first uh, got some uh, encrypted configuration information from itself. Decoded, it, get, uh, uh, it was a pointer to a registry entry. It goes to the registry, reads the registry entry, and decrypts the data because the registry entry contains an encrypted data. And the registry data points on a PNF file in the file system, which was again uh, decrypted by the information that was stored in the registry data and that contain uh, internal pa embedded parts and, and, and an additional configuration nearby, which was encrypted by a key. I don't know, maybe may stored here, but, but, but I'm sure. And, 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 and some additional configuration inside. So, so why is so many pieces uh, or, or so many in, in directions uh, on, on the configuration? Because it is very flexible. This code sometimes should be signed. After uh, signing it, you might be unable to modify it anymore. Maybe it will be revoked, but still, some, sometimes the, the, revoked, the, the code that was signed by a revoked certificate might be accepted. So uh, if you cannot sign any more code, then, then you make some flexible ways to reconfigure your system according to your needs. And uh, it was absolutely the same, same um, technique, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, in the Stuxnet. 
and who knows uh, how many other malware, which, uh, so if you find something like uh, works like this, might be done by the same group. Who knows? Uh, then, uh, that was more, mostly about old stuff. I already uh, talked about that last year and so on, but let's go to no, no more novel uh, uh, stories. Musk. Uh, Kaspersky released information about the Musk malware, uh, Careto, Spanish-speaking malware. Nobody knows if the, it, is, it was done by any, uh, anybody related to Spain or any other uh, country uh, that uh, uses Spain as a, uh, Spanish as a main language. So, but this, is, uh, this was something new. Virus Total, again, uh, what I told, Virus Total is very interesting because the user can check the files, but very good for, ge uh, uh, for gathering in in intelligence information what happened on that. Uh, vi free Virus Total uh, accounts can just check samples, but if you pay enough, then you can uh, go, go and uh, grab files, like download all the samples that were uploaded to Virus Total, mm -hmm. and get all the information uh, who, uh, so not exact information, but uh, information about uh, how, uh, w what is the, the life of one piece of malware? Uh, when was it submitted, retested? How the, uh, the, the first, uh, s at, at the first submission, let's say 11 uh, antivirus detected it, but one week later it, uh, the uh, number rose to 30 and so on. And th this gives you a hint generally. Uh, for example, it will be on the uh, other side, but easier to tell it here. So if you f find out a, a new piece of malware, you upload it to VirusTotem, and the detection is 2 of 56, it's a, it's a strange stuff. It, it can be either new or very targeted. So if it is uh, like uh, sent you by... Sp <laughs> Sorry? Or yeah. Just okay. That, that, that's, that's always true. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go, going by, back to the sample. So if you upload it and it is 10 from 56, it might be that uh, just today somebody released uh, a, a new version of Zeus and uh, infected one million computers. And you are among the first ones who upload it to VirusTotal. But if you go back one day later, you will find that already 25, 35 uh, antivirus products recognized it because it was uh, widespread. Uh, uh, so this was a big campaign and that was only the first day. But if you go back uh, one week later and it is still two from the 56, then you, can, you might be interested. Okay, what is this tool that uh, is not used so widespreadly that uh, uh, only very few samples are used or submitted only once to virus total and so on? And that can you give a hint that it might be a targeted attack. attack. In case of um, of the mask, uh, uh, this is one, so it is from February 10 of this year. Uh, I don't know exactly, it would, would have been better if, if I remember uh, the exact timing when Kaspersky released the information about the mask. But as you can see, it is uh, 11 from uh, 46. If you check the, the virus total internal, you, you s what you see, and I guess you are not familiar with that, and the, hence I am speaking about uh, the, uh, the s somebody's product, is that you can see here uh, hashes who uploaded the file. So they don't tell you what is the IP address of the submitter or what is the, the username, but there are hashes uh, uh, either made from the IP address or, or the username uh, the, the who uploaded it. There are some guys who are analyzing who is uploading what and, and uh, how the um, uh, malware creators test their own products. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, for, for example, uh, somebody found that a zero their exploit was uploaded to VirusTotal to, check, uh, to be checked. <laughs> so that, that, that is very strange. The idea behind is that uh, somebody bought uh, a, a commercial product from the, one of these companies, some uh, other government, and the government was silly enough that they tested first on virus total if, uh, of what, what they bought. Uh, who knows? So here, of course, so, uh, <laughs> I think there were multiple submissions, but what you can see is that, uh, for example, maybe it continues, but the first uh, submission was, was from Russia, which is, of course, an, uh, always an interesting thing. What country was the first, <laughs> first uploader, for example? Because later on, maybe the, 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 all the others are uh, antivirus companies, security researchers, who knows what. So uh, as you go back to, to the, the, the more ancient versions and uploaders, it, it gets more interesting. Uh, and the other thing, uh, maybe I have some, yeah page here. Yeah, yeah, this was, okay, this file was uh, basically a uh, lot, lot sooner, so in uh, September uh, 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 uploaded from Cherry Public uh, and the, uh, on another file name. And of course you can check what was the uh, <coughs> ratio 
on uh, virus total uh, among these uh, submissions. I mean that maybe there is another page. So when it was first sub so admitted, it was two from 48. Uh, of course, I, so it is not the same page. As this was the, the, the chat uploader, and then the, the, the others, uh, one after the other. And you can see that this activity uh, was much higher when, when public information was released. And uh, of course, after that, you cannot really understand what is going on, or, or it is just a mixture, so no, no uh, way to, to extract too much about that. But all the submissions before of that, like uh, early February, might uh, give you some hint what happened with this piece of mother. Um, another interesting thing in Musk is that uh, some of the code was signed in that case as well uh, by a strange company called Tax System uh, uh, that resides, uh, resides in Bulgaria according to the registration data but nobody knows if it is a real company, cover company or, or, or fake uh, registration and the file as you can see on VirusTotal uh, it gives you a hint that uh, the, the signature verification is correct so on, on uh, 10th of February, it was still not uh, revoked and, and, and good. And what is strange is that uh, we, we, we know that when it was submitted in September, two antivirus products uh, said that it is malicious. And the, and the signature certificate was not uh, revoked until February. So why not to revoke? And it is a, uh, so you can make queries on virus total by commercial accounts like tell me all the files that are signed, and the the, the positive rate is more than two, and if we give you a list of, of these pieces of malware, and why do not uh, why don't we revoke all all of them? The the one of the problems is that the signature is valid. Uh, maybe the key is not compromised. It's in their hands, the attackers. So the, the, uh, the PKI uh, vendor uh, may, cannot decide that it is malicious and therefore we have to, re uh, to revoke. Uh, they are generally, uh, I don't know what type of policy do they have. Maybe you have to sign that you are not malicious and therefore they have the chance to, uh, to revoke it. But it is not their duty or they, they might think that it is not their duty. The other problem is if you make such queries in VirusTotal to find out a signed code that is uh, malicious, many times you will find adverse. And which, which uh, from the point of the, the publisher, software vendor, it is a legitimate tool. From our point perspective, it is adware, and I don't want to install on my computer. But, but in the, that case, it, it, the, the certificate might not need it to be revoked. Anyhow, so that's a problem. As I mentioned, yeah, here is a sample query for virus totals like we need, uh, uh, I want to get all the pieces of, of malicious, not malicious files, but, but uh, uh, that has five or more positive markings, but less than 15, because up with 15 is surely something already known and, and something like that, and sign code, and in this way you can find out uh, pieces of interesting code, uh, and you had the chance from September to February. Everybody could uh, dig this information from from uh, from Virus Total and find out. Oh, this is part of the the mask campaign. So it was there. So generally, the problem is that all the information is available, but you have to be clever and use the tools to 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 get the idea of what is going on the internet. Uh, but there is another interesting tool called uh, Signature Search. Uh, Sig sign SRCH, uh, which, uh, give, uh, which contains um, thousands of signatures of, of uh, typical uh, code snippets and uh, uh, is able to uh, easily collect information about one executable file. So if I uh, take this tech system code and run this tool, it uh, will give me the hint that there, there is some CRC code inside. There is a trick called uh, is debugger present inside, which uh, again goes that maybe it is malicious, maybe it is just some uh, DRM related stuff, but uh, might, might, might be anything. <laughs> Uh, also related to the signature, it identified some uh, key or, or something at the end, but it is more, most likely not part of the malware, just the signature on, on the malware. And here, like uh, um, compression code and, and hash code as well. So it's a very good uh, uh, tool because if you can find this out this information manually by using either Pro Debugger or something else, but you get this hint in one second. And then you can move to another file and, and, uh, and get uh, uh, much information very easily. Yeah, 
this was something I was talking about that. One uh, other tool which we uh, use a lot is, is a, a called Yara. It's uh, basically something like grep, but uh, in an extended form. You can uh, hunt for information on virus total or in your own data repository. Uh, it's a, really an advanced grep with, with all kinds of tricks. Here it, it is just a general example of what I did, and, and I will follow this uh, story. Like uh, Kaspersky released information what type of file names uh, Musk uses. And, uh, and this is sometimes co encoded into the file, and or, or so it is clearly available inside the file. Therefore, I made this Yara rule containing all the texts, or all, all these uh, uh, texts, and, and I wanted to find if any of uh, any files in my repository uh, containing these these uh, uh, text uh, snippets. Or the other thing is that I can upload this Yara rule to VirusTotal. And VirusTotal will check every file that is uploaded to VirusTotal against my rule. And if any of them matches, it will give me an email notification, an RSS notification, everything. And I can download the actual sample. So this way, if I have a hint that, uh, that OK, I want to get information about Dukumav or whatever, so I'm working on something specific, then I can uh, make a Yara rule and find out if any other piece of malware is connected to them. Either on VirusTotal, any new submission contains it, or I check my malware repository of terabytes, and maybe I have an older sample that uh, relates to this campaign. So, and I, here there is a file name called wmimgr.sys. Uh, which is important because we will see that we found something uh, based on that. Um, for signed code, I, I can do the same. So if, uh, if I don't have any uh, other tool, then I, just, I can just put the, the identifiers that were used in the code signature and check all the files to find out in my repository if any of, uh, other files were signed by this uh, tech system uh, group. So. Uh, I checked uh, our malware repository, and I found some interesting files that, uh, that, that uh, uh, for, for one, uh, vmimgr.sys uh, was in, in the code. And it was a small kernel driver. I must have used some kernel drivers. But we can see here, there is another identifier, vmisrmgr.dll. This way, you can extend your URL rule. If it is related, then let's find out what, what is related to this. And the other is that this PDB information done by uh, the Visual Studio uh, reflects to the paths where it was compiled. And here you can see tests, ages, s, drv, and so on. But it's a good identifier. Maybe, maybe nobody else will store uh, uh, components or legitimate software components under uh, the same name. So therefore, you can check, uh, again, your repository if any other uh, tool was compiled in this directory. So you go back and extend uh, this, this process. Based on this, I found other stuff like this. Uh, this is a very same code, so I mean another kernel driver, but the identifiers differ, but the same directory structure and uh, two new identifiers which were not in the original Yara rule. And uh, a third one. Uh, and later on, I found even a, 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 a compressed file <laughs> that contained multiple drivers and additional uh, tools uh, uh, that was used on the attack. I think it was on VirusTotal. Uh, yeah, and th th this is this. The, the, the compressed file contained all these modules for, for doing something nasty. But was in, uh, what was interesting, uh, this tool is most likely, not fully sure, but 99% sure, relates to the WinMTI campaign, not the mask. Uh, the WinMTI campaign was used against uh, uh, the gaming industry. They attacked uh, for years various uh, companies uh, with ma uh, malware, targeted attacks, and stole data, tried to do nasty things. So there are many possibilities, but the two main options is either I, I make, made a mistake or, or something, they just used uh, accidentally the same identifiers, or the WinMTI and the mask campaign are related uh, by some means. Again, we, we have, we, uh, uh, so this was done in February. Afterwards, I did not get more information and didn't, did not work too much more on, on the topic, but there is a chance to work on that. Uh, the, but uh, what I wanted to tell by this is that uh, generally uh, running these tools and gathering information raises new and new questions. 
and, and these, uh, these questions won't be answered. So you always just have more and more questions, and then you can s stop investigating or, or continue it later, so you suspend the investigations. And if you have enough questions, generally, then you understand the, the, much of the story. But you have a lot of questions, uh, open questions as well. Okay, so if we want to define what is tr uh, threat intelligence, mal mal malware threat intelligence, is you, have, you want to get information about the whole stuff, and generally you want it before uh, the attacker uh, succeeds doing uh, the nasty thing. So it's kind of a situational awareness, and, uh, and hopefully it gets actionable intelligence. That means that it is not just understanding how the campaign works, but uh, gives you the hint what should you do. And uh, basic options. You find out that you, are, you own a big company, and uh, you find out that uh, some servers were compromised. What do you do? Kill the connection to the, uh, the uh, attacker, or uh, continue to investigate the stuff uh, and try to uh, sniff network traffic, try to understand if other servers were also infected, what do the attackers do, what do they want to reach, and so on. Very hard to answer, so no clear answer, what should you do? So it de depends on the case, depends uh, what servers were attacked in your network. And to understand or to, to decide uh, in a better way, you have to get every information that is available if you're, you make uh, such a de uh, decision, even just to filter out network traffic to a common and control server or something like that. Because, yeah, everything will have a, a, a so after that, maybe the attacker will realize that, okay, uh, they were found, and they, by uh, getting uh, off the traces, they will erase all your other servers because they still have access, and you were not careful, uh, careful enough to find it out. So n no clear answers exist, and this is a, a very interesting area, but, but uh, it's not something that is written in books, and that, that's how you should do. It's uh, really something new, and, and, and uh, the tools are also evolving uh, very much. So there are a lot of different questions. Uh, mosquitoes starting to come in, so um, maybe I make some uh, stuff. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, as part of this threat intelligence, we want to uh, get answers to many things. And, uh, and the typical questions can like these. What is the threat we are facing? What tools do they use? What are the uh, possible capabilities of the attackers? Who they are? What is the goal of the attacker? And so on to understand what they can make. Of course, what is the risk at our site? What, what assets do we have that might be attacked by the uh, uh, attackers? And what happens if they, we uh, leave it as it is and, and the, the attack continues. Okay, uh, then what should be the response? Uh, what should we do? And I make, a, as, as I am a university guy, I made a fantastic model about this uh, <laughs> stuff uh, to, to have some real, real, real thing. Uh, what you can see is that uh, generally what we do, we, we generally collect information, big data, whatever, so, but, but the more important is that, for example, we collect different pieces of malware, malware repository, to, and uh, the, later on, the, the purpose is to, to later on dig into this database and find out important information. Uh, so we start up with analyzing something. So we have the goal to analyze some malware. Then uh, the first thing is that generally we want to get additional information by this trace. Uh, I, I, I mentioned like this virus total stuff and so on. And uh, the result of the analysis uh, is something that uh, is actionable intelligence, uh, something extracted from, from the campaign which can be a basis for a decision, and the decision uh, ends in an action. And the action, of course, modifies the whole story because the attacker might uh, uh, do something, uh, and so on, and therefore we can go back to, uh, to analyze the stuff. So this is one circle, and the other is with dig and analyzing. Like I mentioned that I found a new identifier, then I have to make another uh, dig in the uh, database. Uh, for, for what other tools and, and uh, uh, information sources are available for doing this analysis? Everything, the whole internet itself is, is something that we can use for, for that, but especially AV products, intrusion detection systems, log analysis tools, DNS monitoring, honeypots on the networks, external services run by uh, companies or just uh, uh, organizations and, and uh, NGOs, asserts, 
and so on, uh, public cause and co commercial access, as I mentioned, for example, for virus total, which is, uh, of course, very uh, important. But not just virus total, Shadow Server Foundation has also uh, big databases containing a lot of malware samples, related information. They collect a lot of network related information about different attackers, especially on cybercrime like Zeus Tracker and so on. URL query where you can check uh, uh, malicious uh, URLs, if what, what is the structure of a, a, a web page, but they also collect a lot of information about all the submissions others make. And therefore, again, you can dig into those uh, databases and find out the stuff. I uh, have a sample for OpenDNS umbrella security graph, although it is uh, the old version, which can uh, give you a hint about what is happening on the DNS level. Who you, who uh, not just who, but who uses the, the actual domain name and uh, how it co uh, 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 comes to the actual attack. Malware feeds and uh, malware repository uh, and so on. Another case study, another question. So uh, uh, when uh, Snake Uroboros campaign was published by BAE and, and GData, then uh, there was an indication that there is a Hungarian victim. And uh, of course, that was the question, OK, who is this Hungarian victim? Uh, we, we discussed that with, with the Hungarian uh, uh, government assert, if it is possible to, to find it out who is this Hungarian victim. But if you look on the, the uh, exact publication, it does not state that there is a Hungarian victim. They just state that the, a Hungarian, uh, so on some uh, intelligent collection site, there was an indication of a Hungarian IP address address or something, which can be anything, a proxy server, whatever. But the, the translation of, of, of this is uh, that they checked the samples and where the samples were uploaded loaded from to virus total. This is the translation from, from this uh, uh, fancy text. And the, the, uh, if you check the samples, there are, I don't know, tens of samples. So for one sample, you will find that the first uploader was a Hungarian IP address. Uh, we don't know exactly who because, again, we just see the hash, but it was uploaded from Hungary. That does not reflect anything. So it can be uh, an AV company, it can be us, it can be uh, anybody else, or just a proxy server or a Tor exit node. Uh, but anyhow, it is interesting, but it is not the way to find it out who was that. Okay, but then there is another chance that, uh, okay, uh, let's check this actual sample. What was the, the duty of this, uh, this piece of sample which was uploaded by, by the Hungarian? Maybe it contains configuration information or anything that can be used to, uh, to find out who, who it is. Or, to, or, for, or in this case, it was a, uh, a dropper DLL, but what, what was in inside connects to command and control servers. And based on this information, we can know, okay, the Hungarian uploader might be infected. And uh, his computer was connecting to command and control server. If we check this particular command and control server, we might find out who they are, because the command and control server might store, uh, have a, a log about actual IP addresses who, who contacted to that. And maybe there is a Hungarian IP address, and then bingo, we have this information. But unfortunately, for, for this command and control servers, there were three that, that this sample connected, but two of them are, were already dead. And one of them was still online, uh, but um, so it's sometimes impossible to get any information. So if you don't know the structure of the command and control server, it is hidden or, or you don't have access to it, then you can try to seize it, but uh, we are not uh, authorities, and, and who knows what, which country this server resides. So it, 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 again, we don't see any possibility to really uh, go for this command and control server and find out who was the Hungarian victim. So the end of the story, we can tell that we cannot tell who is the Hungarian victim. But anyhow, now, now you have the understanding that, OK, most likely I am unable to get, uh, get it. And you understand what, what happened. At the first glance, when the, the, the publishing, uh, publication just showed that, OK, there is a Hungarian victim, you're just like, OK, what? But now we know something, uh, and we can make a decision. Uh, OK. Another uh, case study, we worked on a Zeus peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, first, uh, they, uh, you know, they, uh, Zeus is huge, and there are a lot of different campaigns and so on. But what was particularly interesting, somebody tried to attack Hungarian victims, uh, and uh, those Hungarian victims uh, uh, who uh, have access to some banks, so some five big Hungarian banks. And therefore, it was a local problem and not a generic problem of Zeus malware anymore, because somebody tries to attack Hungarian guys. And therefore, we try to sandbox uh, the particular assembly and find it out what is happening, who are these attackers, to, to, to gather more information about the whole stuff. 
Um, and what we found is, of course, we checked uh, this code. It was evident that it is peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer Zeus. Uh, if you run it in a sandbox environment, you immediately see UDP requests go going out of your network, even if you filter it down. And after a while, it, because it cannot contact, uh, contact the UDP-based uh, hard-coded peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, uh, contact points, it starts the, the so-called domain flux or fast flux mechanism to, uh, that generates a spe a specific random-like uh, host names and try to connect them. Uh, the, the, uh, the idea is that the attacker can register one of these domain names that, that relates to that particular date because it uh, depends on uh, uh, the date which domains are generated and then uh, he can uh, uh, revive those hosts that lost connections to all of the uh, partners, UDP partners or whatever. Uh, it was interesting that uh, uh, a Hungarian site contained an upgrade, uh, update version for the malware itself, and for weeks nobody asked this, the owner of this uh, website that, uh, okay, please remove uh, that, that code from your website, but later on it happened. And the, the difference between the two files, uh, it is uh, beyond compare, if I'm correct, uh, that uh, gives you a hint. So here is a, a scale, and then the, the file begins here something, and uh, everything is white. That means that the two files are identical, and the, the differences are only at the end of the file, and uh, only this. Basically, they, uh, they change the configuration part of the malware, but everything else is the same. Um, this is, was not that interesting, but uh, what we found is that new components were, uh, were installed on, on ma some of these computers that were in fact by the Zeus malware uh, uh, on our sandbox machine as well. And these uh, try to uh, talk with uh, new command and control servers in Netherlands and Italy. It was a... Um, Again, not sophisticated malware, but it's not even worse to talk about if it is complicated or not. Uh, not even worse to talk about big malware, small malware, malicious, and, and we've tried to find out who is behind that. And one thing, uh, one thing is, of course, strange that it was programmed in Delphi and it uses an, a known uh, SDK that uh, can be used for remote uh, access uh, to the computer of the victim and so on. Uh, but, for example, some strange thing was that malware components were stored in a binary encrypted form in registry. So one part was running by some other means and it decrypted other parts from the registry itself. So therefore, if you use the antivirus uh, on your hard drive, th these components won't be found. It is only in the registry and again encrypted. Um, they had a VNC module, SOX proxy module, which is not that interesting. The more interesting thing for, for us was that we found that um, for some unknown uh, reason, uh, they, when the, your computer, your victim computer starts to communicate with the command and control server, it downloads information from the command and control server about other victims. Uh, and uh, we had a list of, I don't know, hundreds of, uh, of victims in, in these details. So having uh, the identifier of them, the exact IP address, when they, uh, what is the uptime for that, what is the computer name, like Tibor PC. Uh, and so on and so on, which is, uh, which is uh, usable for identifying the victims to understand more about why those guys were the victims or to notify CERT and, and notify the victim that uh, they need some, some help. Uh, then, yeah, so some, we had something like 500 victims and the distribution was that uh, we had a huge number of Hungarian victims but a lot of uh, Great Britain and Swedish victims. What is the connection between Sweden and Hungary? We no, don't know. So again, a new question and, and not solved later on. Um, there were a number of domain names related to the attack, well, what the attackers used. And for example, uh, here I show you what is the uh, umbrella, uh, how, what is the exact name? Uh, anyhow, it was on the slides previously. So, so open the NS umbrella security graph, uh, which gives you some hint about uh, the last days, how many connections were uh, towards their open DNS servers. And then uh, it, give you a, it can give you a hint how many victims do you think there are out there. And the other is that what countries were using uh, to, to download these hosts. And uh, in addition to Great Britain and Hungary, there is a, a Danish uh, computers use, use using it, which against a mystery, why, why uh, these countries are, are uh, connected to each other. Okay. And of course, a lot of other samples could be collected through, uh, from our malware repository and uh, virus total and so on. 
One interesting thing is that at the end of the uh, code, there was the configuration file, where is the back connect server or something like that. But if you, we dig, uh, so if after we made a dig on virus.n and so on, we found uh, another piece uh, which contained <laughs> this text at the end. Which is, uh, again, the BC server is there, but some serial uh, text as well, like showing that you have to use the specific utility to set the back connect server in Russian. That, that reflects that it is a commercial product that you can buy, and they gave you, you the, the easiest way to, to reconfigure the, your, your stuff if you want to use it. Again, it is not a widely used uh, malware, so, so we just know about these 500 victims, and nobody reported later uh, big uh, infections. <laughs> Uh, this is the original form of, of this data. Uh, for TeamSpy, uh, ag about uh, common and secure server monitoring and information gathering uh, based on that. On, on TeamSpy uh, we, uh, servers, we wanted to go uh, away. So, so I think most of this information was available by the Hungarian government because we had the Hungarian victim that connected to TeamViewer network that could, could be used to connect uh, and uh, check the, his computer activity and so on. And it used the newslight.org, a bulbanews.org, and a bannetwork.org uh, domain names for CNC uh, infrastructure. There were different purposes. So uh, if I'm correct, it was the for, for FTP transfer, it was for specific new way of transfer, and it was just for <coughs> registering that he, this bot is running so the actual victim is still available or something like that. Uh, when we checked these websites we, for Bulba News, we found that Krepo Bogdan Serafimovich registered it, but uh, this guy also registered two other uh, domains, and the two other domains also were also CNC servers, in fact, uh, by the same structure. So if you know the structure of one server, then you might extract information from the other as well. And from Bond Network, the website, web page title contained Polit News not BAN network, and when, hence we got the idea, maybe that is another CNC server. And yes, politnews.org was also a CNC server related to this attack. And then uh, we found a sample that used politnews, and the sample contained another CNC server hard-coded into the malware, which was r2bnetwork.org, which was in fact on, uh, expired or not used anymore. But you can see how we uh, can extend the information and get more and more information that was uh, there, but you could not get it. Uh, one short note is there are two different types of CNC servers generally used. One is hacked website like Joomla, WordPress, and so on. Most likely, these intelligence services attacked, or who knows who, no attribution, attacked thousands and ten thousands of, of servers when zero-day WordPress uh, uh, exploit was uh, available. They stored it, they put some backdoor on it, and later on they, they use what they have uh, when, when they need new servers. Uh, the other is dedicated website. You buy a virtual server by fake credit card or whatever, and you use uh, that dedicated server. Of course, the difference is that uh, here the, the owner generally does not know about the attack and might be helpful for you to find out what, are, what is the exact content of their website. On the second, uh, you, you might want to go to the, the law enforcement and find out uh, the ways how to seize the, the equipment or something like that. Miniduke. Um, for Miniduke, we had new, we had new information. Uh, one year before, there was a Miniduke, as I mentioned, and now the old stuff is still used or used again, uh, but a new version also uh, uh, was created. Why we know that these are related? These are related by code, I won't give you details uh, for sure. This new uh, version uses FTP to data transfer. It is called Cosmic Duke. Uh, the name comes from uh, FSecure, who made a, a report on, on it. But uh, we already we investigated both of, of, of these uh, campaigns for, for months. Uh, the, uh, the name of the Cosmic Duke comes from uh, Cosmo, which was another uh, piece of malware. And code was reused during this attack from an old 10 years old malware called Cosmo. I don't know exactly how many years old. Uh, uh, there were strange things inside uh, this malware. Now it is public, but when, uh, for example, we first saw Nemesis uh, on the code uh, the pass uh, that, uh, that it was compiled in a directory called Nemesis, I was not happy because, you know, Nemesis got off revenge. So who, who wants to be, uh, have a revenge and on what, especially if the attack might relate to the situation in Ukraine? So that, that's not so good. Also, there were uh, uh, identifiers like Gemina, which might be just twins or might relate to a legion 
legion that was uh, actually uh, some, some of the, these uh, legions named after Gemina uh, resided in Romania and so on, which is again very close to Ukraine. So who knows what, but these are surely strange uh, hints about uh, the, the story. Uh, the Mini Duke original version, uh, no, I don't have too much time, but I hope that uh, you are happy with that. So the uh, Mini Duke original version downloaded components from the, the VAT network uh, and, uh, for updates, and uh, the f all the files were encrypted basically, but as you can see, it is a very primitive encryption, uh, XOR-based encryption. Of course, not everybody sees, but, but those who are uh, familiar with uh, PE files uh, can really see that okay, here is the, uh, this program c cannot be run in DOS and so on stuff, or the rich header itself. So very easy to find out what is the key to, to uh, decrypt this type of, uh, of encrypted files. Uh, when we checked this new CNC server infrastructure, we found that uh, sometimes uh, it happens that the victim is uh, sent to a first stage server, but then it gets an update and redirected to a second stage server. And the second stage server is sometimes not directly a CNC server, but we found uh, that some are uh, just proxies to a real, or who knows how many steps, but, but to a, 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 a sync of, of the information. And uh, yeah, that's, but sometimes the second server was not uh, proxied. Then we found, that we, we could analyze one of these proxy servers and it contained proxy.php from Eric Sebastian Lehans uh, or whatever. Uh, I don't know the exact pronunciation, which, is, uh, which means that nothing else exists on, on this malicious website. So only this proxy server was installed, no log, no other component, and no modification in this uh, tool as well. Um, uh, they modified the uh, Mini Duke, uh, they removed the SAJ code and uh, uh, moved to MD5 of Windows to have more space because they uh, put some new code into it. Like uh, there was an embedded library in, in, in this very spo small piece, I don't remember, like 40 kilobytes, but it still had an embedded crypto library inside, which is actually a Microsoft component. And for some time we thought that it is not legitimate Microsoft components and they just uh, use it because maybe the version differs or something like that. But later on we found, no, 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 it is absolutely not a legitimate file. It, uh, it has the uh, ability to connect Twitter and get new updates. And it is not, uh, so it was like, uh, um, put on the uh, computer and after a while, only le weeks later, started to, to, to uh, uh, until that it was dormant. Most likely they expected that everything is fine. But if uh, two, for two weeks they don't have connections to this computer, then, then they have this backup mechanism to uh, update their, their tools. So what happened is that uh, based on the date it generates Twitter, uh, different Twitter, uh, Twitter accounts, uh, we were able to catch this one. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, there was a post on that with an actual domain name which might be redacted later on uh, the, the, for, for, for the ab update. Uh, but, uh, and, and this user really existed, they, they, they registered it, but some days later they removed the registrations and, and this tweet is not available anymore as well. And uh, interestingly, uh, this site really contains something, but that particular uh, file that, that is, it uh, points does not exist and never existed. So it was li most likely created by some automatic uh, automatization mechanism, but they did not really use it, so it was just prepared for, for doing something. Uh, yeah, and now it is no profile on that name. Uh, for, for the crypto library, what, what, which was strange, is that uh, it copied to the file system, but as a, uh, how they call it, the streams, uh, AS, data stream, so, so on, uh, on anti-user.dat, that you, ha you can have additional streams of data, and it, it, it was installed uh, in this way to the, the computer, alternate data streams, that is the, the, uh, the right word, so ADS. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and registered by, by this, yeah, he, he, he also very hard to re read the, the, my own slide, of course. Uh, then uh, the, M uh, the FTP version was, uh, as I mentioned, was strange. It communicates on, uh, can communicate on web and even webdav, but uh, it, it can use FTP to, co to make data transfer. Uh, if you just run one of these on a victim computer, it will upload files uh, that look like this. Uh, 10 kilobytes uh, encrypted and sent to the FTP server. Uh, some information about the uh, Wall Story and the others, how it was published, not so interesting for us. 
And uh, for example, we found a lot of different FTP uh, uh, addresses by analyzing the, the malware repositories and find out uh, pieces. And we found like they used Upgore and DLGore, like upload, download, but they used uh, other names like Vacuum, Menelaos, Harris, uh, and even Madonna, if I remember correctly, the password was something like get up with Madonna or something like that. So uh, funny guys, or who knows. Uh, and from the FTP server, because it uses name and password, Basically, you can, uh, if, if the law does not say you cannot do go there, but basically, technically, you can uh, log into these FTP servers and find out what uh, information is available, what other victims uploaded, or what are tools uh, of the, uh, of the uh, owners of the host. And uh, based on some information that comes from the CNC servers, let's say, uh, we try to analyze what countries are the victims of, of these uh, uh, attackers. And a uh, lot of Russians, Georgia, Belarus, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, and so on. Again, area nearby, Russia, Ukraine situation. Uh, stuff uh, and of course a lot of others but you, you, of course this can uh, be a cheating so sometimes it happens that some uh, the, the lock contains a lot of IP addresses there but because it is a dynamic IP address and the victim comes back on new IP addresses generally we try to avoid this type of confusion by uh, checking the identifier if the lock contains any identifier and uh, 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 only uh, calculate once uh, or uh, uh, those uh, IP addresses. On the other hand, these might be Tor exit nodes as well. So maybe one country like Luxembourg is, is not a real uh, victim. Infection vector, not so interesting. Uraburo CNC servers for, uh, again, CNC server exploration is very interesting. Uh, uh, we worked on that recently. Uh, you can find details on our blog sites, but we've had, the interesting thing, we have found a lot of different tools on the website, which can be reached uh, from the outside. So you can uh, download them and, for example, you can delete a file if you know what is the exact format for the query of, 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 uh, of that specific tool of theirs. What is more interesting is that command and control server uh, contained dedicated directories to each victim. Sometimes it is indexed by Google, so you can even look for, I don't know, some, some kind of uh, similar code. But the, the main, main story is that this is one victim. And for that victim, there is a file that contains the address of the victim. So if you have just a hint of information how the CNC server is, uh, is constructed, you might be able to collect the address of the victims without going to the, the owner of the website and uh, asking for the particular data or uh, any other means. Uh, why do they have dedicated directories? They can put commands dedicated to each victim, and they can have different commands to each victim by, by these means. For example, one uh, simple uh, command was to, to run this batch file and, and get the data back. One more interesting was, for example, uh, that was sent to an ambassador. I redacted the stuff, and you know, I, I know that you cannot really read it, but it tries to grab various uh, files from, from the victim. <laughs> the end is the interesting, like, psktrefen.msg uh, and versuchsomething.msg, europarade.msg, estlandos.msg, and also somewhere there is budapest.budapestwildcard.msg uh, or something like that. We know who was the ambassador because the username was there. Or, or, although it, and now it is redacted, but you know. So it was not, not a very uh, problematic uh, thing to find out who, who is this particular ambassador and in which country does he reside, uh, as well the IP address reflected to this country. So uh, n not very uh, problematic to find it out. And uh, by this, of course, we can notify the, the, uh, the countries related to, uh, to, to, to the attack, and uh, may maybe they can do something against uh, it. Uh, many of them were remarked, uh, who knows why, but, but uh, uh, that does not modify too much on the story. Somebody has to investigate it more deeply, because surely uh, an ambassador can have a, a lot of sensitive uh, material. And now it, most li it is most likely stolen, so you have to know that it was stolen. But and by this kind of of digging, you get the, 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 the idea of what, what uh, is happening and what uh, should you do. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. I'm really sorry to having it so long, but I hope that it was interesting for you. And of course, I'm happy to answer your questions.